This is Kiki. Hello. Here we are again going in deep on subjects that must be discussed according to me. <laughs> okay, enough with the jokes. Disney Channel, then versus now. Let's jump in. Oh, hey, that's me. Anyway, we're done with the jokes. I, I mean, seriously, I'm done. That's over. Time to focus. I was thinking to myself, what does a channel of programming that meant so much to me as a kid look like today? And now that I have a kid myself, what will he be watching? I mean, what kind of value, lessons, and laughs will he experience? To discuss, I have two very special guests, Ali Machaka and AJ Machaka, a.k.a. Ali and AJ. Ooh, cowbell shout out. <laughs> to talk all things nostalgia and Disney Channel. But first, let's get into it with Max and Sharon. Shall we get started? We shall. Hello. First things are first, guys. How y'all doing? Hi. Good. Hello. Um, and secondly, I got to just come right out the gate with this. Are you a Disney kid or a Nick kid? Neither. No. <laughs> um, I, I would say both. I think I've been, I think uh, with my kids watching um, both. I liked Cousin Skeeter. I thought it was good. I liked Ooh, Keenan you and Kel. Back. Yeah. And then I like obviously like Raven and uh the other one, um, the Even Stevens. So yeah, I think they oh, yeah, both that was had cute. great shows. Yeah. No, I agree with Sharon. I feel like both were key, and I mean, both had fun programming. And like, I always remember the show. Oh God, what was the movie? Smart House, where the house. Smart House smart, was everything. And it also predicted the future. It was <laughs> it also Cassandra did. It's talking Troy about Alexa. Predict- Exactly. And who knew? And Megan. And, uh, (laughs) but yeah, definitely both. I feel like both gave us so much. I feel like Disney's always had a little more message. It was a little more like heart message. And Nick was a little more like, you know, like true topics, but with more humor and gags to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always always felt Disney had more money. I don't know. (laughs) Well, I mean, like. Disney Channel definitely had had their own money. I mean, considering the fact that me and L'Oreal immediately noticed when we started watching Disney Channel that they had no actual commercials. They had so much money that they didn't even need to have commercials for advertisers. Like, they could commercial their own stuff. You know how cheap you have to be to to not have regular advertisers, but literally be able to play your own shows as commercials? Um, So... First, I was a Nickelodeon fan, and I'm talking about I Real Monsters. I'm talking about Rugrats. I'm mm. talking about Keenan and Kale, all that, um, you know, Rocket Power, all of that good stuff. And then yeah. we got some better cable, and <laughs> we discovered a little channel called Disney Channel. And yes. we were like, what the hell is this? Like, we couldn't, we, I remember us getting, like, what was it? What was it? Direct TV? And walking yeah. into the room being like, Mom and Dad, we, we got a new channel. It's called Disney Channel. We got all these new shows. We got all these new shows. And they was like, good for y'all. And we <laughs> fell in love with Lizzie McGuire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Lizzie McGuire was the first one that we fell in love with. And then for yeah. Lizzie McGuire, it was uh, Eva Stevens and the famous yeah. Jack Jackson. And then yes. we got into all the movies. First Disney com I watched or DCOM was uh, don't look under the bed. You know what I'm saying? Right, we fell right. in love with it. My mom said we were so impacted by Disney Channel that we went from going mama and daddy to mom, dad, literally. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and then also that I noticed too, obviously the parents love Disney Channel because it was a way for the kids to watch television while you cook dinner or, you know, whatever you had to do. But then mm-hmm. I started really paying attention to these shows and the ongoing theme was the parents were idiots. My or the parents boy. or the parents were non-existent. Or the parents the parent were always was, non-existent for sure, too. Or the parent would come home from vacation after they tore the whole house up and, and fixed the house back up. And the parents was just totally oblivious to everything. And I think that kind of messed up a whole generation of kids because they oh. were thinking they could outsmart their parents. <laughs> Well, I do feel like with all the DCOMs and definitely some of the shows, there was a little bit of that. But there was the other thing of it where the parents seemed to actually, this is the thing that I think really didn't happen that we loved about Disney Channel shows is that the parents always tried to understand their kids and ain't no damn yeah. parent in real life trying to understand their kids. I no. mean, in the Disney Channel shows, they would be like, just tell me what's wrong with you, really? And then it would be like this deep moment and the mom and dad right. with, you know, typical sitcom multicam sitcom style which yeah. i do think like i do think that growing up watching those shows definitely gave us a higher expectation of life i do believe that mm. 
Well, no, wait, Kiki, yeah. question for you, though. As someone who actually not only lived and watched, but lived and starred, what was the experience like going from, like, when you would do your show, True Jackson, then to doing, like, Jump In? Was there, like, a different vibe when you were shooting those kinds of things, or were they That's similar? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Disney and Nickelodeon both run as corporations, but it's very clear, again, it's not fair to, like, really compare Disney or Nickelodeon sure. to Disney. The reason why is because Disney is, like, a 100-year-old brand. I mean, I don't yeah. know if that's the exact number but it's way older than Nickelodeon could ever be so it does have much more money and it does have more of a well-oiled machine um Disney they just know their messaging mm. so much more like clearer it's like a, it's like a religion over there you know what I mean like so when I was working with Disney and doing all their stuff, the machine, I felt so much more like programmed. It felt so much mm. more programmed because they yeah. knew what they wanted you to say. They knew what they wanted you to wear. They knew why they wanted you to wear that. They knew what they that who the audience was, what they were trying to gain with this particular project. And everybody was just so on their piece and cues. And with Nickelodeon, it was a little bit more fluid. It was a little bit more of like, well, what do you think? I mean, not necessarily what do you think, but like they actually like were, were they were a little bit more like you know, creating it in real time mm, and figuring out sense. in real time. And Disney, they just, they were like, honey, this is what it is. And you either fitting into it or you're not. You know what I yeah. mean? And and there yeah. was actually a sense of comfort there. It was almost like going to a parent that is like, you got to be doing this by 1 p.m., by that by 5 p.m., by that by 10 p.m., and then we're done. It's like yeah, going from a parent that, yes, it's like going from a parent with an extreme schedule to a parent that's kind of like, well, we can have time for some, you know, differences. <laughs> and you're like, no, I want you to know. I want you to be secure. You so know, you, so, like the, you like the discipline of the schedule. And yes, stuff. Dis yeah. Disney is very disciplined. But that's also why some kids hated it. Oh, because it was too rigid. It was too, Disney is very much like, <laughs> Well, the one the one thing you can notice is that when a, f a former Disney kid, when they hit like eighteen or nineteen, then that's when you start seeing the piercings and the tattoos. They do. They have that's that all moment. Child, that's all child entertainers that you know. Because yeah. the reason why is because you're just so bent down to a character. Yeah, you're not yeah. able to really be yourself. So you know, you never really got to try those tattoos or try those earrings or yeah. whatever you're trying to try. Try that. Dance competition. I mean, it could be anything. But it's just like you lived in such a bubble for so long that when you're finally let out, you just want to try all of it at once. Yeah. Yeah. You know, another thing, too, about with Disney Channel and Nickelodeon kind of started doing later is that Disney Channel was so good with the movies. Yes. With the oh. high school musical, the jump in. Like, and you know, they okay, so, made so a, a big event. Yeah. Let's pause this for a second. What's the Disney Channel movie that you saw that everybody loved that you just could never get into? For me, it was High School, High School Musical. Musical for me. Yuck. No offense. Really? I have so many friends from that cast. Because honestly, I just... First of all, I'm very topsy-turvy with musicals. I like musicals, but it's got to like surprise me that it's a musical. I've never been hmm. really too into like we're in a conversation and now it's time to go to bed. Like I just didn't like how stuff was always like that. I'm very weird with musicals. It's so strange. It's got to hit me at the right time, the right vibe. Um, so I didn't love that. Um, I like some of the songs, right? Some of the songs was good. In that first High School Musical, I did like it. But I feel like I don't know. It just the the way that it blew up like that. I di I didn't love it like that. Mm. Yeah, because the la that movie, those two movies did so well that they released the third in theaters, which was unprecedented. It was they unprecedented. Had, yeah, and I mean, to me, that the one was... I loved like that was Cheetah Girls. Cheetah Girls was my one. Cheetah I mean, Girls, yes. hold yeah, on, girls. Uh, sit tight. Uh, I yeah. mean, them girls ate that up. <laughs> I think for High School Musical too, it was. Um, I don't know. It was just. It was nothing but grease. It was nothing but grease. It was definitely grease. It was definitely. I mean, they had the you know Corbin and and the other young lady, so they tried to you know be inclusive and diverse in that regard. But I just thought uh, it just didn't do anything for me. I, I kept watching. Yeah. I kept waiting to to be impressed, and I just never was. But I mean, hey, the music was good on some of them. I'm telling you that first one when they had Drew Seeley singing the songs, because that was the gag. For years, people had thought that it was Zac Efron singing on that first High School Musical. They done edited in him a voice, a, a blue-eyed brother with some soul, honey, because Drew Seeley was eating those songs up. Yeah, I gotta remember what was that song. We're, We're soaring, flying, 
that boy was singing. There's not a star that even maybe I did like High School Musical. Yeah, yeah I feel like you need a cover album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think Disney was so brilliant. I think Disney is so brilliant at marketing and promoting that they made us love it. They played it over yeah, and over and over. Yeah, they forced it down my throat. Mm. Can we talk yeah. about that? Because something happened at some point that Disney Channel stopped only playing their commercials and started playing other people's. So I think some things had changed. I don't know what had changed, but I'll tell you, I feel like the last shows that I feel where Disney Channel was like, this is the thing. In terms of mainstream, you know, there's, kids stuff and there's adult stuff and mostly mm. obviously adult stuff is what everybody is talking about everybody's talking about what's happening on network television everybody's talking right. about you know just what's reality tv whatever any of the bullshit that we see but the time that i was a kid disney channel penetrated everything yeah. meaning adults were talking about these shows these shows yeah. were so good and so huge and they were making so much money that they moved their way into like major conversations mm -hmm. that weren't just subjugated to you being a kid. I think yeah. that stopped after Hannah Montana Wizards of Waverly Place. Maybe Jesse yeah. made it, but I don't even think Jesse, the show Jesse made it, which was like the last one that I can remember hearing about. Well, Kiki, like, and to me, that brings up, like, with Pixar, you know how so many of the Pixar movies can both hit kids, but then have such, like, I think right. of Up, how Up is such an, a movie for all or Inside Out. I mean, and that's really brilliant when you can make something that is supposedly geared towards maybe a child audience, but can resonate with so many people across the, the, the spectrum. I also think that the uh, stars, and Kiki can talk more about this than I can, I also think that the stars, like the Jonas Brothers, for example, they penetrated their audience. They were little girls screaming. And at some point, those little girls grow up. You know, they're not eight anymore. They're 16, they're 17. And they're not looking at the Jonas Brothers anymore. And so it kind of forces that the Jonas Brothers or whatever group that was hot during that time to reinvent themselves. Mm. Um, because you, you, no one wants to be a 35-year-old man gyrating and performing in front of little girls. Not girl. gyrating, girl. You know what I mean. <laughs> Come on, Jai Rain. The, so That's nobody, hilarious. You know, you know and I, I actually heard this from um, Garth Brooks. He said this. He was like, you know, every artist has to grow. And it's it, there's danger when you blow up so young because then your audience grows up and they can actually look back at you and say you're lame. But I'm going to take a quick, yeah. quick right click real quick and talk about somebody who's done this. And I know that people hate her and love her and whatever they want to say about it. But one young lady that never stopped growing with her audience and, you know, her main core audience that I really love and respect how she's done this, Miss Taylor Swift, honey. Yes. Taylor Swift. Yeah. She has done it, baby. She yeah. did it. When everybody counted her out, I mean, that you whether you listen to her music or not, Mama is a skilled writer. Her pen is lethal. Let's yeah. understand that. <laughs> and she, and, and she has, she, her and pen she has is lethal, has, honey. She's probably she, one of the few artists that the whole family could go see. You understand yeah. me? Yeah. Well, the little 10 year old girl is she excited. Ain't play with. And the 40 year old dad is excited. It's like, she no. ain't do to play him. with. Mama, mama had me at. You know, our song is a slam of screen doors. <laughs> she had me there. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, then I kind of got off. I was like, oh, no, I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't listen to that. That was when I was a teenager. Just the other day, I'm hearing the anti-hero. Yeah. Oh, you and her talking it? about, when I, you know, if I was the man, I'm the man. She's still growing and shutting shit down. Yeah. So yeah. she did it. She did it, but she was yeah. not a Disney Channel talent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. But in yeah, a mainstream yeah, world, that's the who Disney they was tours. trying to. Yes. Right. She took yes. advantage of the Disney tours. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. And she really, she really found her way to mature her music and mature her sound, and still yeah. keep the young little girls looking up. So that yeah. is a hard thing to do, and I don't think that a lot of these. I mean, I think Selena Gomez has done a really good job with that. I think her audience has grown up with her. She she found a way to mature her music. And even though her music is not, she's not always giving us a jam. But when she does, she's coming out and giving you something to like sip some tea on or cry yeah. on. You know, I watched a couple of her videos not too long ago. And I was like, yeah, mama was killing it. So every right. now and then the girls do um, grow with their audiences. But it's, it's very rare because people be tired as well. You know what I mean? Sometimes you want to just sit down after working for these corporations. They really could right. take a lot out of you. I mean, did you ever have any worries about that with me, mom, that I was going to get kind of burnt out? Um, you know what? Yes. I, 
I mean, you are someone who really loves people. You're a people person. You love to entertain. And I, I don't know if I was ever concerned with you being burnt out as much as just you carving out something for yourself. You're always that person that's looking to, for other people to be taken care of. You are always concerned with, are you okay? Is this person okay? Are they okay? And um, as you got older, you started realizing that was important. And you started saying, you know, I need more time or I need this for myself. And you you kind of just carved that out for yourself. So once you started doing that, then no, I, I wasn't concerned. But Working, like you said, for a corporation, especially when I mean, you, you have to be honest, Sharon, because sometimes we would they would be doing stuff. I would get slimed. Then they would wash my hair out, and I would have to shower in a stank old trailer. Then they would slime me again. Then we'd have mm-hmm. to do all this press. And then we had, you know, we did a lot of stuff. I mean, I would be working yeah. all day and night. Yeah, we had you to know. take you to the ear doctor. Remember, we had yeah, to take because all the slime got stuck in my slime ears. Slime out of your ears yeah. and stuff. Yeah, no, you I know, mean, it, it was it a really lot. worked. That we, we did jump in. You know, we was at that stand at that hotel. Then the they had bed bugs. We had to change the rooms, and then we was—I was working yeah, was on doing lot. stunts. It, it, it was yeah, a lot was of a stuff lot. going on. How did you handle that seriously as a mom? Like, did you ever have any moments where you're thinking to yourself, "Damn, am I putting my daughter to each, too much?" Each situation is different. So, like for the Disney Channel, when they put us in the room and the hotel had bed bugs, I mean, I was livid. I went off. I, you know, I went off on the producers and. Everybody was there and I told them this is, you know, unacceptable. So there were moments that I went off that you didn't see me go off when we did rags and, and they changed the script on us. I mean, they literally changed the script. I went off. I went off and told the executives, I don't know, you know, who you're playing with, but we're not doing this script. So, yeah, there was moments that I had to speak up and I had to tell them that this is unacceptable. For the most part, they listened, but I tried to shield you from that because I always know you're uncomfortable. The type of person you are is you don't like confrontation. You kind of want everything to be professional and smooth. Oh, honey, nothing stops me from getting my work done. <laughs> I can go on and on and on about this. You know, and even though I think we could all agree that Disney Channel has changed a bit, there's something so comforting about it still, even in memory. And I can't wait to chat with Allie and AJ about Disney and hear about their own experience working with Disney. All right, let's get into it. This is Kiki. This is Kiki Palmer from Jump In, and you're watching Disney Channel. (laughs) Wow, guys. It's been a while (laughs) since I've said that, but we love a little nostalgia, don't we? I mean, that's why I'm thrilled to welcome my next guest to the show. You know and love their music, and they definitely know a thing or two about Disney Channel. Please welcome to the show, Allie and AJ. What's up, girls? Hi. You guys know I'm obsessed with you as talented, amazing entertainers, but also as humans because I've known mm-hmm. you guys for such a long time. Thank I mean, you. I'm just so excited that you guys are coming to the show. So thank you, first of all, for coming and hanging out on Baby. No, this we're so Palmer. happy. And we, we're, we feel the same. Mutually ah. obsessed. And we're so happy <laughs> to be on the show. Oh, my gosh. Well, so today, today we're obviously talking about Disney Channel. And you guys are not new to Disney Channel. First of all, you're icons of it. So I have to first ask you, what was your favorite Disney Channel show growing up? Very Even Stevens. Yeah, this is yeah. a very, very simple answer. I would say Even Stevens, hands down, number yeah. one. We were big Lizzie McGuire fans. I would say that was in our number two. Um, I'm curious what yours were. So, I mean, I feel like we have similar tastes because, first of all, I loved Even Stevens. I mean, yeah. Even Stevens, Shia on that show, Brilliant. Christian Brilliant. Carlson Romano. I mean, yeah. it was just so good. Um, but then also Lizzie McGuire. I mean, who didn't love the little cartoon moment? I know, I know, I know. And also, I feel like that was like that was very unique. That was something that wasn't like on it was her Jiminy Cricket. Wasn't... Yeah, it was her. Oh. It was like her, you know, being aware of her consciousness. Like it, it was, it was kind of deep, but like in a very like kid way. So it was love deep. It was deep. It. Um, it was what deep. else did I love? I love Obviously, that so Raven. That's yeah, so that's Raven come on. Great. I can see under the new <laughs> yes. um, and, I mean, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on with you guys, but Phil of the Future. I mean, come on. Phil of the Future great was show. really Phil a was great good. show. Yeah, sure Phil, Phil, Phil of the Future. The future. You know it. First century. <laughs> he's a 22nd <laughs> century man. Yeah, yeah, he's a 22nd century man. I really love that show. Down. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Well, I mean, so we have Disney Channel shows, obviously, but then we also have DCOMs. So what was your favorite Disney Channel original movie? I mean, you could pick your own, but... No, no, no. I don't no. think ours is Ours, that good. honestly, was not that good. Although we were laughing because The Ringer did some, like, breakdown of, like, 
50 best. And we were like 48. And I was like, okay, okay. that's about right. We made, it. I was like, we made it in there, but it's not the top. Um, <laughs> we really loved Johnny Tsunami. You guys love Johnny Tsunami. Yeah. Loved. Is, is, that, is that controversial? Do, do no, I mean, like I think most guys, mostly I was always, guys were always like, Johnny Tsunami, Johnny Tsunami. Yes, I always sure. was like, no, Johnny Tsunami is a boy movie. I was right, just so right. Regular. I think we liked I the think, boy ones. I think we liked some of the boy ones. Brink. Brink. I was about to say, did you like Brink? Yep. Loved Brink. Yep. Oh my god. Um. Um. Mo- motocross. <laughs> loved, Y'all loved motocross. all the boy. The main. The, that was like Disney Channel being like, these are for the boys. Yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. And we were like, and us. I love Don't Look Under the Bed because I felt like Disney was trying to be like goosebumpsy. You remember it was oh, like, yeah. uh, don't, don't look under the bed really scary. I remember that, yeah. When it was like about the boogeyman, I, I loved yes. that one. It was kind of scary to me too as a kid. Um, Love that one. I loved, can we just talk about Smart House? Smart House. Love. Come also, on. such a good idea. Katie Se- Seagal. Yeah. Uh, Come Katie on. Seagal. Smart yeah. House Katie killed Seagal. it. Mm-hmm. Who else killed it Um, for DCOMs? Um, well, I'll take you back. There was a really, really, really old school one that I loved that starred, Um, oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, it was the girl from Grey's Anatomy. You're gonna know Catherine her name. Heigl. Oh. Catherine Heigl. Wish Upon a Star. Wish Upon a Star. That's a great one. Also, I, that is for the girls. That is not for the boys. So, you know, as you can see, like, even though I'm very, like, I'm totally, like, masculine too at the same time, for whatever reason, the Disney Channel movies I loved always were the super girly ones. I always, I mean, a Smart House was kind of in between, but, like, Wish yeah. Upon a Star, Honey, Life Size. Life but Size. Life Size. Life size. Wait, wait, was, was Life Size technically? No, you know was, what, guys? I don't think Life Size was a DCOM. I think it was on channel. Life Size and Wish Upon a Star, I believe those were both purchased. I don't think those were original DCOMs. Wow. We got to IMDb this to get to the bottom of it. They were bought, like when a movie is bought for like Hallmark or Lifetime. Also. Yes. I wonder who really made that movie. I got to look that up. Also, I feel like another one of those movies was, do you remember that, the the President's Daughter one? Oh, my my day day with with the the President's Daughter. Daughter. Yes. yes, my day with her, yeah, girl. Yeah, with her. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I do the note? I, I'm, I'm too much, yo. That movie was. I love. I have to ask you guys. Do you feel like the Disney Channel that we grew up on is the same Disney Channel that the kids are watching today? Absolutely it not. It is dead. <laughs> no, it, Sorry. absolutely not. It Sorry. has no. It has. I, I just think. Well, first of all, I think a couple of things. I think one, oh my gosh. it was like fresh and new and they were doing something exciting in that like space of television. It was so good. And it was great. And like the the slow, the slow, did you ever do one? Well, slow guess, jump? The slow jump thing. Were you ever in one of those? I don't think I did the slow jump. I didn't do, I also did didn't do the, do the, um, you guys did the actual. No, no. AJ never got one, just me. Only Allie. You know why? Because you had to have a TV show. Yep. I think so. That's why. If you That's didn't do why. a TV show, because I never did a TV show. I did a DCOM, but I right. never did a TV show. So if you had you had your own show, so once you do that, then they let you do the thing. But that even, was the one but thing. But even right. Proud Family. And then that you're didn't, on the jumping. Proud Family didn't technically count. Yeah. Well, Proud Family, I'm on the new one, not the old one. Oh, that's, oh, right. that's right. I know. Isn't that crazy? Although you should have been on the, on the original. Yeah, oh, man, great. that would have been insane if I was on Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy that I'm on the yeah. new one, too, now. No, that is I surprised you weren't Penny Proud. Like yeah, that was Kyla Pratt. Shout out to Kyla. Kyla. That was Kyla. Love Shout Kyla out to Kyla. She's really good. She's great. I know. Too. You know yeah. her doctor do little loving basketball. Right. No, of course. Of course. She's amazing. So I agree with you guys. I actually do feel like the Disney Channel that we grew up on is not the same. And for a while, I was kind of thinking, like, is it just because I'm an adult? You know what I mean? You know how that is right. when you're like, oh, maybe it's actually me. Like, I'm not a part of the current generation, so I don't like right. to get it. But I do think it's different. And I wonder, like, I don't know. I think. When I think about the the late 90s and the early 2000s, the version of Disney Channel that we grew up on, I agree with what you guys are saying where it was like, it was fresh, it was new, but then I also feel like it was also like not talking down to the generation. Like yeah, I feel yeah. like it was it was comedies and it was funny, but it was also talking about real issues. I yeah, I agree, I agree. And also, I mean- It felt like it had a little more depth. We also live yes. now in a bit of like this like woke, culture which like at certain times it's good and we should be like yeah this is problematic that we thought this you know one way of thinking was okay when it's not but right. i do believe that i'm sure part of that has changed the programming you know and and the people way are that scared they, yeah exactly they're like oh we can't do this or like we're gonna like piss off this like you know section of people so i'm like i think that i think that that plays into it for sure and 
also like they shot their a lot of their stuff like i know phil at least was shot on film which is crazy to think that that's crazy well that explains why you said it was only two seasons hell it was probably too expensive they were like uh, we're so done <laughs> and they had like cgi and shit so they were like we can't that was an expensive yeah. show we can't do this anymore Very, wow. so i think that played into it i mean also just like some of that early 2000s fashion is so great and like so funny and it's time capsule way um, it really is interesting how that is. I mean, you just think about all the iconic things that came from that space. And it's just like one of those things that I feel like can never be recreated. No. Agreed. Like even the cartoons, Proud Family, yeah. Kim Possible. Like Kim Possible. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know. Amazing. Phineas and Ferb. Phineas like, and Ferb. Like, oh my gosh, I love really, Phineas and Ferb. The, the original DCOMs, the original cartoons, the original live action were really good. And, and yeah. like- Look, kids still love Disney Channel, but it's not the same as what it used to be. I just don't I think mean, the quality is the same. I don't know, but you're right. Maybe part of it is because we're not kids watching it, but I like to think that my taste is good and I would know. I agree. And I, I mean, I, it's not like I don't go to watch a Pixar movie and say, this is for kids. You know, right, I can right. understand a good kid project as well. So I, I agree right. with you that it's like maybe, you know, and then the other thing I was thinking about, like a lot of times with these shows from our generation, the, what we grew up watching or working on, a lot of the people that were doing them were like from network television. That's and I true. wonder if that changed. If that's that changed. True. Like the, yes, a lot of the creators. I don't really do see a bunch of network like like older women and, and male actors wanting to probably be on a, on a Disney Channel show or movie. No, not and, so and much. the showrunners are usually not from major That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the showrunners, like the showrunner and the creator for my, my show was a Nickelodeon show, but it was like, you know, the creator of Just Shoot, the people that were doing Just Shoot Me. And they also right. now were, they then went on doing Modern Family. Like they were doing a certain style of something. Yes. And then they were like, oh, you know what? I want to do something for kids. Let's see what I can cook up for kids. Right. Because it was such that's a, a hot, right. right. that's a very good you know, point. That's a great so I'm point. like, maybe they were like, like you know, or they had children themselves and they were like, this might be fun to like make for my kid, you know? Yeah. You know, we were supposed to have a show together on the channel and it didn't get picked up. Which one? It was called Haversham Hall. Mm-hmm. And it was a show. It's so funny. It but- was basically like a, yeah. we were like a Hogwarts. It was basically like what Harry Potter was doing. So it was two girls that were sisters, but didn't know. And they met in school <sighs> and it was like a magical school to bring out like your oh, creative it's almost talent. similar to Twitches. Kind of. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Very similar. And it Disney was the always does that. It was the guy that did, well, it's funny. Our pilot was with the writer and creator of Wizards. Wi- Wizards. So I guess kind of makes sense. There's a magic thing. And he it. DM'd us recently and was like, or tweeted us and, tweeted. and was like, imagine if the girls and I had gone on to make Haversham Hall instead of what they're now doing. Wizards. Uh, or yeah, something, or like something like that. Like it was, that. It was, like, at weird. first I was like, is this a diss? And then I read it and I was like, oh no, he's like fully complimenting where our career went. It was oh, very Yes. Similar. Absolutely. I mean, you guys are iconic with whether you are not have a sham haul or not, but I was the same way. I had a pilot with Disney too called Kiki and Jamal. It was about a little girl named Kiki, yes. you know, trying to become a star, you know what I mean? And be an entertainer. And so they really, uh, they really messed that up. They should have had that. But <laughs> they, 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 they missed the boat but that's on okay. that one. So now I got to ask you guys, um, I mean, I know this could be controversial, but I think, it, you, you know, you got to ask it. Were you always a Disney kid or were you a Nick kid at a certain point? Always Disney. Always Disney. And it's funny always because. Disney. From little. Because. Really? From, yeah. From little kids. We were always obsessed with, yeah. especially me, like with Mickey Mouse. Like would that cry. was like a thing. Would cry at Disneyland when she saw Minnie. Oh, like, yeah. It was oh, my like, gosh. Excitement yeah. yeah. Now to talk about Mickey, you're an original movie. Disney kid. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. That is true. You are original, original Disney kid. That's an original and Disney kid. We still watched Nickelodeon. Like, mm-hmm. I remember we would watch like, I we would watch, honestly, the things that were like our our shows on Nickelodeon was like some of the cartoons, old school cartoons, like, like Rugrats and Rugrats and recess and those ones, you know? Yeah. Um, and then honestly, all that. Absolutely. Girl. Obsessed. I mean, Which the I know children's you SNL, the children's SNL. It's the children's it's SNL. It's the children's SNL. All that was unbelievable. And so was the Amanda show. Oh yeah. Amanda, 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 Amanda. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, why- why was that? I love so, that you know every jingle. I love that you know all of them. Oh my gosh. Um, I, well, that was the thing that tied us in. That's also a thing that's missing as well. I think the theme songs and the jingles back then. I agree. Then I agree. Like, it's not you hooky. guys, do the three of us need to be writing theme song hooks for these Honey, new TV shows? No, we would have it whipped up into shape, girl. Because y'all's pen is. 
<laughs> your pen. <laughs> or writing pen is just moving constantly. I mean, you guys have been writing all your lives. I mean, let, let, let's take a, a quick break and just talk about your intro into Disney. Because, I mean, how did they discover you guys? Like, what was the relationship there? Like, I mean, they you, you, you started working with them at how old? So when I, I guess when I booked Phil... I had just gotten my braces off. I was like, literally like, I think I had gotten them off like three months in advance. Girl wasn't booking with braces. I was not booking with with braces on. Now it's cute. (laughs) Now it's like, you can book a commercial. You're like, I'm a normal kid. I've got braces. Yeah. But then it was like, ooh, she looks wrong. So So um, So I remember I booked it and I was 13 when I booked the show. Um, By the time that we shot the pilot and then by the time the show went, I think it was like, I was 14. And I remember after the first season, I want to say they had some music element thing that was involved with my character, like singing on stage and being nervous and having stage fright and, like mini, and having a mini, mini fill on the mic to help me sing, which is so funny. So he, he got shrunk himself down. to help her. Yeah, it's pretty cute. And I remember I came to them and said, I write songs with my sister. Like we have this one song that we've written. Like, could I put it on the show? And they were like, uh, can we hear it? And the, sh- the song actually was perfect for the scene. So they literally put a song on the show that was- That we wrote at 10 and that 12. That we wrote at 10 and 12, but it hadn't come out yet. Like no. it was like a song that would then be on our debut record at Hollywood. So it was this very strange mm-hmm. connection. Yeah, so- So were you guys was- already signed to Hollywood or you, beca- you, got, you got signed to Hollywood through this? Got signed to Hollywood through this. And it was like, I want to say- going into the second season, I think was when we got signed Mm -hmm. and we made the record. I came back to set. We did our second season around that time. I think I had maybe done that magic movie, uh, decom the now you see it one on my own. And then forget you've done two. And then, and then we did ours. I think after I had wrapped but, I'm but then everybody the always thinks we had a damn pitched. show together. And we didn't I, have a show. makes me laugh. I'm like, I we never did not got, have a show. I never got the yeah. wand. But it's because we always seen you got, you know, like when I, I mean, it's like Allie and AJ, Allie and AJ, we just know. Because also the music videos. You remember Disney Channel used to have those music videos in yes. between. We were yes. like, Allie and AJ, Allie and No, it was like an MTV. But they used to yes. play the best yeah. music videos. BB yeah. Mac. I mean, remember the music videos oh they'd God. rock? Oh my gosh. And remember, what, what was the one boy, the blonde boy? Y'all know his name. Aaron um, Carter. Nope, not Aaron Carter. Je- Je- was it Jesse? Was it Jesse McCartney? Jesse McCartney. Jesse McCartney. <laughs> yeah, and he was what? a label mate with us, and we did yeah. a lot of shows together. He was very. He I don't was want very a pretty face. Me. I don't want just anyone to no, 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 I don't yeah. want another no, 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 go no, away. No, <laughs> that was so beautiful. Your beautiful, beautiful soul. Soul. <laughs> Yo. So that good. is insane. I think that is so song. cool and so impressive that you guys so young were literally like, hey, you know, advocating for yourselves in that way to the point that you actually got a record deal and were was able to get your music into a Disney show. I think Disney is interesting in that way. That, like, if you push things to the forefront, like, I think about it with my career. Like, I started doing stuff with Disney, just did DCOMs, and then slowly I did started doing hosting for them. I ended up working in their news division. And it's like, in Disney, it's interesting how you can grow, I think, because they have so many different tentacles, you know? I agree. Yes. And I feel like they... It still helped us. Like, to this day. Like, it still follows our career in a way that's really kept an umbrella of people around our music and our acting. It's amazing. Well, and I believe that it's one of those companies where, like, yes, there's people can have, like, a great experience there. They can have a bad experience. It can be a mix of, of all of it, too. But I do believe that they also really gravitate towards kids that are like, like want to do it and are precocious and into it. And AJ yes. and I were those kids. We weren't, thank God, coming from a family where our mom and dad were pushing us into the spotlight to do this, to like pay for the bills. Not that yeah. also, that also makes sense at some you know point. I'm like, I get it. Mm-hmm. Maybe your kid yeah. is like helping you keep the lights on. And that's that's a tough responsibility to put on your child. I mean, being a child but, actor, it can go either which way is you're right. It can be yeah. stressful or it can be just completely not really fun. And you know, the kids are totally. you know. But yeah. for us, it was really, it was, it was fun. And so it wasn't like a, we're doing this because you kids have to like make money for the family, thankfully. And the funny thing too, is that like, even um, the fact that like how I auditioned for Phil of the Future was all because I was in one of those. And you know, all these old school workshops, because I, 
a hundred percent believe. No, that tell you me about the to. workshops because I need to know about the workshops. What, yeah. what, what, tell what, Donna, what does it look Donna like? Jean Gohean. Donna Jean Goheen. Donna Jean Goheen, baby. Donna <laughs> Not Jean Donna Jean Goheen. Come on, Donna Jean. Yeah. Come on, Donna she Jean. Was booking she was the, the key. And so they would do they would do workshops, and you guys would go they in. Would and then yes, and that's what they scouted. Scout and I was in one of those workshops, and she was like, "I think you'd be really right for this show I'm putting together for for Disney." Wow. I think yeah. that's also missing, guys. Now we might be getting to the root of it. They don't have a lot of those people anymore yep. that are going out there, hitting the ground, and finding the real kids. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Right. Like, it's not yes. just a kid that's like <clears throat> that's like an actor kid, but a kid that's like like <clears throat> right. like wants to do it and is fun and has these little quirks and is like and is a, a real kid. Yeah. Yeah. That is that I think is so important. I wonder what what the missing piece could be to that as to why those why those workshops don't happen as much anymore. Do why we need it might to be all form a, we need a to start something of a workshop between the three of us and we are casting we would this kids kid out work. of these kids. We would, I would scout. Everywhere. I'd go to Eureka. I'd go to Ojai. I'd go to San Diego. I would keep it fairly local, <laughs> but I would scout the hell out of Disney kids. We have to reconvene on this because the kids need us. Yeah, this is a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys yeah. remember um, the Disney Channel games, like the website and the games, like Lilo and Stitch, Hamburger Stack and all that? Did you guys ever play any of those? I yes. loved the and games. And by the way, we were obsessed, Like, I, which is funny because I we used to go on, on to DisneyChannel.com. I used to go on to DisneyChannel.com on our parents' every computer. night. Yeah. Girl, and play games. I would be playing the Kim Possible game. That was also a really fun yep. game. Like, yep. it's so insane to imagine, like, all this nostalgic stuff. And, and it makes me wonder, like, what is millennials' obsession? What is our obsession with nostalgia? Is it like, does everybody have this obsession with nostalgia? I mean, I've never heard mm -hmm. Gen X be like, oh, my gosh, remember when? But, I mean, maybe they do. I, I, I just feel like we're obsessed with nostalgia in such a like, aesthetic -y way. Like, it's like a part of our DNA. I'm just so curious as to what, why, why is that? I don't know. I think it's a longing for the past to grab your childhood again. Like I, and maybe we're all just really you know sad being I think adults. Too, I think it's a little bit of that. Like we all were still a part of that pre-internet era, yeah. or like uh -huh. really heavy internet. You know what I mean? So True. I think that's a little bit of it too. Is like being on your parents' computer, and it's like, but you didn't have like a cell phone. You know, you didn't you you didn't have Twitter. You didn't have Instagram. It was like you go on that lap on that like PC. We had and you'd be on there or Dell or whatever, you know? And you were on the computer and it was like, okay, you have your 30 minutes are up for playing games tonight. Like, it was very wholesome. You know, one thing I was really sad we were never a part of was Disney games, as in the game challenges that people We got. never did that. And they I was never really called sad. me I either. Like, I wanted to do the Disney games as well. I feel like we would have crushed it. That's why they didn't it. invite us. They knew we would have been eating them kids up. Correct, yep. correct. They're like, don't bring them. They're, They're actually like, no, those girls are going to kick way too much ass. Baby, this is so when you think about your time working with Disney, like what are the memories? Like what was the experience like for you? I mean, I think it helped that we had each other. Like, yeah. I think the, the, the hardest part I think of being on the channel was not like the, you know, getting stopped on the street. Like when, you know, our mom's doing running errands right. or going to the grocery store, like we actually handled that pretty well. And I think it's because again, it was still pre-internet. So it wasn't like too much the, what the version is of mm -hmm. a kid being famous at 16 today would be. Yeah. Um, but I think that the hardest part was finding like our individuality within Hollywood records Ugh. and within the channel once we started making music and they understood like, okay, these kids aren't just like cookie cutter girls that we're going to just throw songs to yeah. and have them record. They're like right. making their own music. They're like really in the trenches on all of the music production. video ideas and the production and how they want the album covers to be in a way that I think they weren't used to. Whereas I think a lot of girls would just kind of show up, they do it and be like, bye. Right. Um, so that was, I think, the hardest struggle was finding our, like, voice in that. I think that's true to any probably, artist, too, unfortunately. I think it totally is. Any artist, any label. Yeah. But I think when you're younger, you really want to prove a point. <sighs> and I think it took us a long time to get there where we actually got, like, solidarity from the company saying, like, oh, okay, these girls, they're artists. They, they know what they're doing. And I think after a certain point, it was kind of like, you can't really beg for that response. Mm. I mean, I think eventually, like, Bob Cavallo, like, certain people got it. Yeah. The a and guy we were working with, it wasn't really a good fit. Like there were definitely a few people in the company where it's like, I feel like we kind of just, we we surpassed the label. Yeah, yes. like our time there had an expiration date and we just said, okay, you know what? We're going to move on here. Now look, if we had stayed and like just kind of duped it out and said, 
look, we'll make like compromises and stuff. I'm sure our success would be in a different place, but in a weird way, I'm glad for like our relationship as sisters and our overall artistry that we took like a, a true step back and, and, and just I said, you know what? And I think that's 100% right. Because even if you had, like you said, become uh, or be in a different place, quote unquote, success wise, whatever, because obviously you're extremely successful. Um, but when you think about it, it's like you, you would be known for someone you're not. And I think that's the big yes. thing when you're when you're asked to compromise when it comes yeah. to these label situations because I'm right there with you. I went through so much stuff with labels and all of that kind of stuff and <clears throat> trying to, you know, develop and learn myself as an artist without you telling me who I've got to be to be what you think is mm -hmm. successful. And I think ultimately totally. when you say no or when you, you do stick to what's authentic for you, you are happy with who you be, who you are, as opposed to being some, you know, changing and turning into someone you're not, it's, it's never going to, you're never going to actually feel valid in how you got somewhere. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think. Yeah. And it also helps. Like, I think a lot of these artists, as they get older, they feel like they have to reintroduce themselves yeah. because yeah. they're kind of ashamed of what they presented when they were younger. Cause it didn't feel like them then. So they're like, well, I got to now reenter the space in a new 100%. way. So it's like, I don't feel like we ever really had to reintroduce no. who we are. Like I do feel like, yeah, of course, if you're going to go through our entire catalog of music, there's going to be certain songs and I'm like, Ooh, this is a little cringy, but sure. it's like, but I wrote it like, yeah. you know, yes, we like signed off and all the mixing and mastering. But we were also like 16 years old thinking that was probably cool then. Where exactly. Stuff you you change and you grow. I mean, speaking of that, I mean, you, 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 you know, we grew up watching you on Disney Channel, seeing your music videos, your music, your early music. But you guys are still doing incredible stuff. So I want to talk about like where you are right now with your music. What are the kind of conversations you're having now? What's changed? You know, how, how do you now see yourselves? What are the conversations that you want to have? You know, I think for Allie and I, we took a, a big break from music. You, you might not know, but we've basically, I mean, a 10 year hiatus oh, wow. happened in our music career, which not everyone does know. And it's kind of funny when you talk about it because you're like, how did 10 years go by? Fly yes, by, but we yeah. weren't putting and out. And y'all look the material. same. It's like, what? <laughs> you look the same too. You look so the crazy. Same. I'm so thankful for us both. Yeah, same. we're, we're so we're thankful. For, yeah, for I'm our thankful for all of us. <laughs> um, but I, I feel like that 10 year gap. First of all, I think it brought Allie and I closer to where we wanted our music to be, but we were able to do it privately. Yeah. So like we continued to write, we continued to kind of test the waters musically with each other, but a lot of it, we weren't really brave enough to put any of it out and it didn't feel right at the time. It was for us to exercise with each other. And I think that that 10 year gap, we were focused more on acting at the time. Yeah. I think that brought us into this new like future for our music. 2017 is when things hit. Yeah. We found a new team. We had a couple mentors around us that, that really inspired this EP called Take Me. Take 10 Me. 10 years. And the first single was Take Me. And it kind of started the career off again. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because our music is not even really where that was. That was a lot more pop, electronic, synth leaning. But I think that that 2017 EP is when our music fully kickstarted into like our adult career. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, so there was a 10-year window where these girls were not releasing any music. And what were you, you know, you said you were focused on the acting, but I'm curious as to know, you know, obviously in those 10 years you experienced stuff personally that contributed to, you know, this current album. So I'm curious as to what kind of experiences you think that you went through in those 10 years that maybe you, you know, really contributed to the music that you're creating now. I mean, I think part of it was like living in another country. Really? While Where? shooting a TV show. I lived in Vancouver for like, you know, on and off, uh, over that, those 10 years for like six years, wow. you know? So like I was working on a show up there and I would come back and forth. And I think that was like good separation for us because we did so many things together that mm -hmm. like, I think that was a great thing. Then we also chose to like actually live together and rent a, a, a house together for a good, I guess, what, what was it? Like two years? Two years. Um, and made a movie in that house. And like made an independent film oh, around great. kind of our our lives and the, the characters are loosely kind of based on, on who we are as, you know, sisters, I but mean, pretty, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty spot. Spot. <laughs> like, like, Actually loosely. the movie is yeah. us. It, it is it, us. It is, yeah. it is us. Um, but, um, you know, I think those things like helped us get to that place. And then I think just a lot of like, I think a lot of the songwriting mm -hmm. being like new collaborations with, um, you know, with, people that we hadn't worked with yet and were finally introduced into our circle, like that definitely really helped like get us on a great point where we were like, okay, we're like inspired to be writing new music. And it's because we write, wrote 
music with these two or three new guys that we kind of started like vibing with. Oh my gosh, yeah. Collaborating so really and finding us. good collaborators in general is like, it's gold when you find it because you just, the wheels just start turning and it just doesn't stop. So I love that for you guys. Exactly. Thanks. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, it never stopped. It never, it did in the public eye yeah. musically, but it didn't for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do feel like we grew up. Like I went on to live on my own. Allie went on to live on her own. And then we had that moment where we came together and made the film. I think that entire window of 10 years completely brought us to where we are now with this record. Yeah. So a lot I wouldn't of be able to define each moment and how it did it, yeah. but I know that, that there was a trickle down effect to what we've been able to put out. So now. what would you say is your favorite song on this current project? Favorite song. Um, that might be hard. You can give me it's a few. Too. I'm going to say, yeah, I know it's yeah, difficult. Yeah, we can give you a couple. Well, I would say I, Blue Dress. I think Blue Dress is really special. And I think um, I think With Love From is, is a really special song as well. I mean, me a lot of it also feels like, uh, it feels like my answer changes when it comes to like performing it as well. Yeah. At, you know, sometimes just performing a song makes it feel more special or I feel even more connected to it than maybe if I'm just listening to it in mm-hmm. it's produced uh, form. So I think, yeah, I think Blue Dress, Open to Something, um, With, with Love, love from. from. Those are Sound kind choke. of, those are some special ones on the record that yeah. I really connect with. We would, I would love to have you at a show. I was just about to are say, because I know be- you guys are on, t- on tour right now, right? Well, we just wrapped the first leg of the tour, so we finished in New York, but we go back out in September and we play the Greek on the 8th. And if you're in LA, I'm there. we would love for you to be there. I'm absolutely there. Oh my gosh, I would love to watch right. you guys live. That would be just so everything. Now, do you perform any old songs just for kicks or just all the new stuff? We do. No, we do a we lot do. of old yeah. material. And, and as we got, like, it's funny, you're like, yes. I'm like thrilled. Well, it's, it's funny because as we've like, toward this kind of new iteration of like Ali and AJ starting in 2017 again, we've realized that, okay, we have to like serve the fans and playing some of the old stuff. But obviously our, our main focus is like, this is the new music. This is kind of the new sound, like get on board, yeah. you know, but we want to a hundred percent play songs like potential breakup song and on the ride and no one, you know, those kind of songs that I know people connect with rush. Mm-hmm. We found kind of cool ways of like, roping them into the new record. Like we have this really cool mashup that we've done with a a song from the new record called way of nature, way of grace and, um, and rush. And like, they just feel really good together in a way where we both kind of looked at each other, like, are we going to have to be playing this song for the next like 40 years? Cause it really works. Yeah. I love what you said about that because I think every artist experiences that. I think obviously it feels more intense when you, when you go from being a kid, you know, to an adult in the span of your career, because you know, so much drastically changes. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I don't yeah, think there's, yeah. I think everybody has that feeling. Like I think I had even seen an interview with uh, Avril Lavigne or something saying she hated to perform complicated because it was something that she wrote when she was like 17 or 18, you know, and so much yeah, changes for them. Like, it. you know, you, 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 what you think is this or what you think is cool or what you hate or what you, whatever. But it's like, that might be like one of your hits. And it's like the people want to hear right. it, even though cool. for you, you don't maybe even agree with all the things, you know, you're not the same person anymore, but it's so interesting. Yes. Cause like you said, it's still something that the fans, you know, love and they want to hear. And, and so finding new ways to reintroduce that, I'm sure it's, it's, it's fun. Now, now I'm curious as to how you guys, approach creating your music like you know does it start with a beat or you know does it start do you play guitar or do you just start writing the lyrics and then putting like how how does it go you know usually we write starting with like a melody I mean most of the time it's never like one formulaic way that we do it yeah. but I would say like usually it starts with yeah. someone playing like a melody on guitar or on the piano and then we're kind of like humming along to it and we kind of have like you know fill in filler lyrics that we're just using to remember the melody. And then we usually put in the lyrics uh, later once we've kind of locked in a melody that we're really loving and vibing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we'll like work from uh, like song title that we think is cool. And then maybe- That's exactly what I was gonna ask next. I was like, is it a song title or is it a conversation or, you know, just a vibe? Correct. Or like a quote from maybe like a film or a book that you read that you feel like, okay, this could be really good to inspire, you know, a song. I, I feel like no, it's kind yeah. of a mix. But what about you? How, how do you do it? So, yeah. So, mine's is multiple different ways. Um, if I'm writing the song, for me, it usually comes from a conversation or something that triggers a thought or a feeling or a vibe. And then I usually just, uh, you know, I, if, I, if I do have, like, a track or something, because I don't play anything. So, if I have a track or something, then I'll listen to the track. 
um, and I'll see if that that vibes with what I'm trying to say. Um, and then I'll just start doing laying a little bit of melodies down. Um, let the melody mm-hmm. lead me to writing the words. Um, but then, yeah. like you were saying, it can be different, you know, because if I'm collaborating with someone, then I also am open to letting them lead the way and seeing how they usually go about it. But I think I would yeah. love to do something that's even more stripped back now, um, you know, where where I, where I could start with an instrument or I could just start with the words and find a way to construct the music around that because I've never gone from the ground up in that way. Um, so I'm really curious yeah. when I do my next project, uh, to really try to go that route, you know, because I'm curious to see what I could end up coming up you with. Should. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, be, yeah, really as opposed experience. to writing on top of a track, yeah. starting with nothing. We're people. actually going to start working on a Christmas EP. Ooh. So if you want to get in a room with us and we all work on a holiday sign together, we I think that could be um, fine. I think that would be everything. Girls, y'all know that yeah. I'm here for that. That to me I'm seems more for- realistic than us starting a Disney Channel casting company. Probably does feel more realistic. So I think we work. But you know what? All I did, no, no bad ideas. No, no, no. True. All no, no, I'm here for the EP, and I'm here for you watching Baby Leo. Okay, great. Baby Done. Leo. Done. Baby Leo. We're so happy for you, Kiki. I love you guys. I want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show. But I need you to know that before we end this 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 moment, I want us to get a chance, AJ, to really do the you know. Let's do our wand. Let's do our wand. To do the wand. Are you doing it just with a finger? So, yes. I mean, we don't, I mean, we can edit in. I'll edit in some VFX, girl, because we deserve this moment. I'm Kiki Palmer, and you're watching Disney Channel. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay, my turn. I'm AJ Mashaka, and you're watching Disney Channel. Period. (laughs) Period. Period. Wait, wait, but hold on. One thing I want to say, Kiki, you know, growing up, like, we knew each other. Yeah. But we didn't hang all the time. No. Like, we didn't, we weren't, like, tight, tight. And, which, we, and which, we by the way, have. I'm pissed. I know. I'm pissed. Because yeah. I feel like we would have built a friendship that runs deep. <laughs> and now we can as adults. But I'll never forget, we were Betty May casting in Marina Del Rey. And you and I were auditioning for something. And... It was to play best friends or something. I can't remember what the project was. I just remember it was Betty May, which is now shut down. And you were so freaking sweet. You were so energetic. You were looking at your lines and you saw that I was, and we were both outside on the concrete and it was really hot. And I know we were both probably nervous. And our moms were there with us. We were young. So we're still young? Yes. Oh, that's cute. And you were so cool. And you were like, it's Kiki. Hi. Hi, AJ. And I was like, hi, Kiki. And I remember walking away being like, wow, we've only met maybe once outside of this. And she was so, and you were so lovely. I'll never forget it. Well, you know, I've always been Betty Betty May casting, baby. First of all, Betty May, that's like pushing my wig back. I've like, that brings back so many memories. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was always terrified. And I was always really big fans of you guys. Like, always loved you guys as the the whole we're sisters we're killing it you know my sister sings but she's not really into the being in the public eye so I really admired how you both were like able to do it together I think that's so special which Mm -hmm. I feel like you guys know it's really special um so I always really looked up to the fact that wow these are two sisters that are doing it together and my sister and I both I mean literally when my niece and my nephew their name their nicknames are Allie and AJ so like our love for y'all runs deep okay and um I just I just love you guys I'm so happy that you guys are Oh had time to come on the show and I can't wait to come to the tour and I can't wait to do this Christmas album with y'all. Yes, to do the Christmas album to ba- to babysit baby Leo. I agree. Mean, we, we've got a lot of things on our plate, but honestly, oh, well. it's never too late. And that's kind of the beauty of this is it's that not. maybe we didn't get to form that like that tight friendship when we were little kids because we were all busy and doing things, but now we can. And we I can love- go to Marina Del Rey whenever we want. Exactly, okay. and we can you can be by Coastal and hang out with us in L.A. and and, and, and the other thing I love we, about you we girls, will support you for another thing I love about you girls is y'all not afraid to praise the Lord. Y'all love the Lord too. Amen. I live Amen. for y'all for Amen. that. Every time I'm like, that's right. Me and Allie will be we'll be like, praise God. Like I'm like, those yeah, my girls. I know. I know. Praise I'll God. be DMing her like, mm, yes, Amen. Yes. Preach. Yes. 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 And we're not no, afraid to talk about you, it. You don't have to be afraid to talk about it. And I feel like, you know, we all know that. Sadly, Christianity's gotten hijacked by some scary, mm, some scary peeps. Man. You know what I mean? And Judging it is very and all this kind of That's stuff. A good word. It is depressing, yeah. but it doesn't mean that everybody subscribes to that version. Exactly. Now, you know what I mean? I love everybody. No. So, everybody is gonna be good. That's right. That's right. So, that's beautiful. I, I, I love that we I have love, that. In I love yes, that. Yes, that that's low, that's in also why I think we, you know, like you were saying, AJ, why that connection is because it's like, you know, what what is it? What is the phrase? You know, um, real recognize real. 
period. Yes, yes. yes. totally. There's a no, little, true. there's a little spiritual connection yeah. there. Like, hey, I see you. I there's know you. There's a little God spark. Yeah. And by the way, like, I know this has been like very much a like celebrate Ali and AJ and how cool they are, which is adorable. But like, you're fucking awesome. <laughs> you're so talented. You're crushing. crushing. Like. I'm sorry. Like, never stop. I live for any the phrase of "you're crushing." Did you guys see that new no, clip of are. crushing? <laughs> and there's like so many kiki platforms and things happening, and I'm so proud of you. I don't know how you do. And it. we went and saw Nope um, in theaters on tour. On tour, My girls. Uh, last year, yeah, last year, and we just we we were loved. We loved it. And I, we were so proud. I was like, we felt like we were like proud moms. Oh my gosh! Everything you do. Well, Allie, AJ, you know I love you, girls, and I thank you so much for coming by the show. Come back anytime. Done. Done. We love you, We too. love you. We support you for life. Ah, uh, wasn't that just the best? I could have talked to them forever. I think, I don't know, I think the three of us could totally make some magic together. But as always, our episode comes to an end, and you know we love to end with some fun. So today we're going to play a spinoff of Here For Or Nah called DCOM Or Nah. Max, you want to explain how it's going down? Okay, here we go, Kiki. You know how I do. Okay, we have five movie log lines for you. Some of them are real, actual Disney mm. Channel movies. Some of them are fake. You have to determine if it's a real DCOM or no. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, number one. When dog psychic Jack Morgan treats the inappropriately named Pooch Lucky for depression, he has no idea that his treatment will land him in the doghouse. Lucky's <laughs> owner dies, leaves him all the money on the condition that Jack lives with him. Jack's delighted, but the owner's family is furious and determined to fight for what they see as their money. Can Jack thwart the evil relations despite Lucky's canine capers? Okay, so it's a dog psychic who treats a pooch. The owner passes... The cash, cash money. To Lucky. On the, I mean, this could be... I mean, they did have a movie called Doghouse... But I don't think this was it. I'm going to say no. Oh, Kiki, it's it real. It's it's real. It's called You Lucky Dog, starring Kirk Cameron. This is Disney Channel? Yes, it's real. This is a terrible movie. <laughs> that I think terrible. you're going to need to you need to re, you need to watch it on uh Twitch anyway exactly. and respond. Uh number 2. Okay, here we go. Two high school girls create a virtual boyfriend who turns out to be a, a confidential robot prototype owned by the U.S. military. The Pentagon and its international enemies are on the hunt for this guy, but he's out playing high school football. Even when he returns to his robot soldier duties, he somehow makes it back for homecoming. Is this real or nah? I mean, I remember they had a movie called Pixel Perfect, but I don't remember. That was a virtual girlfriend. I don't remember the virtual boyfriend. Uh, I'm probably going to be wrong, but I don't know. These must be ones when I, when I wasn't a kid. So I'm saying no to this one. Kiki, it's real. It's called How to Build a Better Boy. These are all new. This is some Gen Z Disney Channel. This is not Millennials Disney Channel. No way. I got to see the year these movies was made. Let me. Check. Yeah, we're going to have to look back at the ages now. Look, number three. Here we go. Morgan's world is turned upside down when she discovers that two new people joining her family are alien refugees from outer space whose biggest threats are hair dryers and wind blowers. I want to say yeah just because I've been getting them wrong, but I'm going to say no because I don't recognize this. <laughs> it's real stepsister <gasps> from a planet weird. Oh, I do remember stepsister from a planet weird. I never watched it. It always was doing too much. And Kiki, your lucky dog was from 98. I don't know where you were at, I just were at, Googled 98. it right now. Yeah, I just Googled it right now. I was only, I was a baby. They never played this one again. It must have been horrible. You were just a little What was the other one honey? called? The other one, the middle one is called um, How to Build a Better Boyfriend. How to Build... A better boy. Exactly. 2014, honey. I had already been practically out the door. Honey, we've said that farewell to that channel at that point. Yeah, I said okay. Yeah, this was China and McLean, child. China and McLean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, number four. Angie is a 15-year-old from Oklahoma and has been wanting to learn to drive her entire life. That is until her father, who's a race car superstar, died in a tragic car racing accident. And now she can't even look at a car without crying. Luckily, she is left with an XRON 300, a self-aware, self-driving smart car that has helped teach her how to drive and be the father figure she's been missing. Since she lost her father. I'm gonna go ahead and say yeah. Oh, Kiki, no, this one hasn't been written yet. Why does it sound like that one that Lindsay Lohan did? What, what was Herbie it? fully loaded. Herbie fully loaded. Where rumor has it she was fully loaded. Oh, who said it? I don't know. No the shade, robot no tea. Over. 
Never, ever. Okay, last one. Number five. Okay, Relax is a coming-of-age story about a young girl named Rena who is the star of her high school lacrosse team but struggles deeply with mental health issues. Relax teaches great lessons no, about... No, no, this is already no. <laughs> Drugs. Uh-uh. <laughs> This is a drug story. This sounds no, no, like it's, it's more for Lifetime, Charlie. Yeah, it's it's Lifetime. Uh, no, that was not a Disney Channel movie. You were correct. <laughs> well, I must say, it has been a thrill looking back at the joys of Disney. So many still hit. I need to go and binge. Until next time, dear listeners, you know it's your girl.